Oxford University teaches its students how to use AI so they can learn more effectively and efficiently. And today I'm going to show you how they do that. Hello, I'm Giles. I make videos about the science of learning and learning and science. If that sounds interesting to you, then subscribe. It'd be great to have you with us. AI has the potential to transform and accelerate your learning. It could become a talented tutor for you. And that's not just my opinion. This research found that AI enhances academic performance and study efficiency. But there is a high chance that you're not using it properly. Well, after watching this, you will be using it properly. You'll be a machine enhanced, fast and efficient learner. Because AI is good at doing things, we ask it to do things, write a report, summarize a paper. It's useful, but the more we ask it to do for us, the less we end up doing for ourselves. But that's no good because it's the doing where we learn. You wouldn't get a personal trainer to run round a track for you and expect that to have any benefit. So instead, use it as a trainer, get it to challenge and guide you. How? That's coming up. But before you start using AI in this way, you have to remember that it can get things wrong. So always be critical in your evaluation of its output. They're renaming the Gulf of Mexico the Gulf of America. Crazy AI hallucinations. First of all, you have to think about how we actually learn. And I know this is something I've spent ages talking about on the channel, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing it, but study after study has shown that retrieval practice is the most effective form of learning. You can't make yourself remember by trying to remember. You, you can give it a go and you'll see for yourself. But you do remember by interacting with the information that you want to learn, and that also helps your understanding. So however you use AI, you have to make sure that you utilize that. Getting AI to force you to think about something or to ask you lots of questions on it and test you is a much better strategy and it works with how our brains like to learn, just like a tutor might. And Ethan Mollick, who is a, an AI researcher, discusses that in this post on his Substack. And if you want to find out more about AI and how to use it properly and prompt engineering, then I really recommend taking a look at this Substack. It is excellent. You didn't give the URL. What's the URL? Oneusefulthing.org. I'll add it to the description, I think. So you have to prompt ChatGPT to test you and how might you do that? Well, obviously there are loads of different approaches, but let's start with Socratic questioning. Now, this is something that I've discussed on the channel before, and it's a fantastic way of finding out where, you're, where the weakness in your understanding is on a particular subject. Act as Socratic tutor and help me understand the concept of momentum in physics. Ask me questions to guide my understanding. It gives me 10 questions about momentum. Here's question one. What do you think momentum might mean in a physical sense? Can you describe it in your own words? You put in your answer and ChatGPT will assess how well you understand it and feedback. This is starting to take you away from rote learning and getting you to think about concepts much more deeply. It's the sort of thing that a tutor would do. It's actually the style of an Oxford admissions interview where they ask you questions that they don't expect you to know the answers to and they will guide you through to an answer. And the reason they do that is to see how you think about something. They want to find out if you're a person that has intellectual curiosity, you can work their way through a problem, or whether you're someone that's just been coached to know what the answer to certain questions is. Has this ever happened to you? You're learning back-end development online and then... What's the GDP of Belgium? You didn't realise your online course came with this warning. May cause drowsiness. That won't happen with Boot.dev, the sponsor of this video. They know that boredom is the major obstacle to online learning, and they've eliminated it by gamifying the process. Boot.dev is where you can go to learn back-end development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages. The platform feels like a captivating RPG game, and it's designed to do something very particular. What? Get you writing a lot of code because that's the only way to really learn. Why learn back-end development? Well, according to Stack Overflow, the median back-end developer salary in the US in 2023 was over $100,000. Boot.dev offers a 30-day no questions asked refund policy, and there's a Discord community to help you if you get stuck on your coding challenges. Click on the link in the description and use my code Python to get 25% off your first month, or even your entire first year if you choose the annual plan. Ask ChatGPT to provide multi-level explanations for you. So first, as if you're explaining to a child and then a high schooler and then an academic explanation. And then you do the same thing and write it in ChatGPT and ask it to assess how it thinks you've done. I've just done this with Momentum and this is what I get. 
You can also ask it to create practice questions for you to answer at different levels and use analogies and real life examples to help you grasp the concept. And then you do the same, write your own ideas into ChatGPT and get it to assess them. The idea is to always to get ChatGPT to challenge you. And bear in mind Bloom's taxonomy of learning and expertise. So it starts off remember and then understand and then apply. And then what does it analyze, evaluate and create? And, and you could even ask ChatGPT to do that for you, to create a set of challenges to enable you to do that. It's like you have your own personal trainer where you're being challenged to think. That's what makes the difference. It's why Oxford still uses the tutorial system. Another benefit of learning with AI is that there's no embarrassment. So imagine you're in a classroom with other people and there's a concept that the rest of the class understands, but you don't. You might be embarrassed to put your hand up to ask the teacher to explain it again. But with, with AI, you don't have that embarrassment. You can ask it just to keep on explaining and re-explaining and interacting with you and getting you to write about the concept until you finally understand it. It can also help you with reading. You have to be careful with this one because if you just ask it to summarize something for you or put it in bullet point form, which is quite good at, but sometimes misses things out, it could prevent you from developing that skill and also you won't know what it's missed out. So a better way of doing it is for you to summarize the paper and pull out the key concept and then ask ChatGPT or whichever AI you're using to do the same and see where the differences lie. You could also ask it to list the key concepts needed in order to be able to understand the paper or article that you're reading. Now I asked it to do something a little bit more interesting with this paper. Here's the article and this is what I asked it. Give me a list of 20 key terms in this paper and break it into five categories. And this is what you get. Now here you could argue that I've asked ChatGPT to create something for me, which is what I've spent a lot of the video saying you shouldn't do. But what it's done is give me terms and concepts that I can then go off and research and try to understand. It's a little bit complicated, so you'll have to pay attention. Make a list of propositions in this text in the format X is a type of Y, W is caused by X, and A explains B, and put it into a table with three columns. And this is what you get. And so you get a really good summary of all the concepts and terms that you need to go off and make sure that you understand in order to be able to properly and thoroughly read the article or paper that you're trying to learn about. These suggestions, which I've started using quite a lot in the last few weeks, come from this web page on the University of Oxford website. So this is what they are suggesting that their students do in order to be able to use ChatGPT and AI to enhance their learning. It's like having your own personal tutor who's a little bit unreliable, but generally very helpful. Everything that I've used in this video is linked to in the description. Plus, I'm linking to one other paper that uh, is recommended by the University of Cambridge in its library department uh, for using AI effectively. And it uses something called the clear principle. So I'm flashing that on the screen now. You can see it here. Uh, but it's probably a good idea for you to go off and read that. And once you've read the resources that I've linked to, you will be in a great position to use AI in order to transform your ability to learn. And you'll be using AI as a learning tool far more effectively than most people. It's definitely worth your while.